What a fight, by the way, uh, and what a performance from Brad Pauls, uh, the new British middleweight champion. And look, for what it's worth, and Brad, thank you for joining us as well. For what it's worth, I actually thought you might have done enough to nick it the first time round against Nathan Heaney um, back in March. But obviously, you kind of made sure that you got the job done this time round. No no mucking about here. He was like, it was almost I sensed from watching it, Brad, that he's almost like, I need to get, out, get him out of here. I'm not going to the points. I'm not going to the judges. We need to get this done. And you made sure you got it done. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and you're right. Um, I didn't want to leave it to the judges again. Obviously, last time wasn't, say, the fairest, I believe. And it makes it clean and concisive. It makes it definite when you win by stoppage. There's no question. So I'm happy I got the stoppage. I know I could hurt Nathan and I'll get to him eventually. What's it like, sort of British middleweight champion? Obviously, look, as soon as you take up the sport as a pro, obviously your dream is to become British champion. Obviously, once you win that, your dream will be to become European and world. But the first one is British. What was it like when he heard you, when you saw when you heard and the new British champion, that feeling? Uh, it's crazy and it sounds familiar. Since I've been shouting in the gym for the last 12 weeks. <laughs> um but it's something I've worked 21 years for, and it's all I've talked about. And it's the last belt on my list of the um, domestic titles, the Southern area, the English and the British. Mm. One of the most satisfying sounds I've heard in my life. So, yeah, good times on Saturday. You've, you've done it all the, the right way, haven't you? You see a lot of fighters now jump, don't they? A lot of them go to international honours. They go and fight for European titles or fringe world titles. You, you've done it the correct way, which we don't really see that much in boxing you just said it there area title English title British title was that always the way you wanted to do was there every temptation to maybe do one of those international routes um no it's, it's the way I always wanted I feel it's the most credible I feel like with domestic titles you're fighting recognized names mm. and they tend to be tougher fights for these for these belts especially for the British you're not getting an easy fight and the English um and I think you need to be the, the champion on your own land before you move on to anywhere else so yeah, area, English, British, tra traditional route is the best route in boxing. Brad, what are we thinking next, mate? Are we looking at Tyler Denny, Hamza Shiraz, or do you want a piece of Eubank Jr.? <laughs> um, <laughs> there's so many names. There's a massive list there. You could have kept on reading for another five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Who would yeah, you like, though? He, he wants the Denny one. Denny beat yeah. him. Was, yeah. He wants that one back, surely. That's it. Yeah, obviously the Denny rematch is um, really interesting. Obviously there's history between us and he's improved and gone on and won the European. He's done amazing and I've obviously improved since that loss. But I did say to Heaney after the fight he would like a trilogy and I said I'd honour it because he gave me a rematch after our draw. Um, so that's a possibility still. But the, the possibilities are endless. I've got a world ranking now um, and there's a lot of doors opening. So... The next fight's a hard one. That's all I can say. That's the beauty of it, though, isn't it? I mean, you can be as good as you want to be. If there are no options, I mean, you're fighting yourself in the mirror, aren't you? Yeah. You've got options now. And with what's going on with the Saudis, there's big money in it as well now. You look at what Tyler Denny and Hamza are probably going to make for their fight on the AJ undercard. Big money fights out there, big opportunities. Yeah, massive opportunities. Um, the way boxing is at the minute is the best it's ever been. The promoters working together. The Saudis have obviously helped to one of the main reasons why this is happening. Um, and if they wanted me on a Saudi card for the money they're paying, I'd, I'd fight my own mum in Saudi for the money they're paying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Same here, mate, and I can't box. <laughs> Um, but honestly, no, Brad, I mean, it is a fantastic opportunity, especially yeah. where you've come from as well. I mean, there aren't that many champions from Cornwall, are they? The Nuki era, that there aren't that many. I mean, you, you, you're putting that on the map. Yeah, definitely. Um, I get brilliant support from Cornwall, and I guess it's because they can't support anyone else. There's no other pro boxers. <laughs> so they're sort of stuck with me. Um, so it's me flying the flag. But yeah, it's not about where you start, it's where you finish. And I love representing my homeland and bringing titles back here. So yeah, it's good. Are you still based in Cornwall? No, I, tra I train in Essex, almost mm. East London. So there's more opportunity, better sparring. I'm next to the Peacock Gym, next to the Simses Gym. And that really develops you. So I had to chase the dream up country a little bit, but I always visit as much as I can. I'm here now. Has there been any reaction? I mean, I saw all the fans that you bought ringside. I mean, look, Nathan Heaney brings a ridiculous amount of support, yeah. but you bought a fair amount of support as well for yourself. Has there been any reaction from Cornwall? It, Are you going to yeah, be like, given the keys yeah. to the city or anything? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had a couple of free pasties already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
yeah, the people really get behind me and support me. Um, and yeah, they're just sticking behind their man and um, supporting their own. So yeah, I'm really lucky. But yeah, the feedback's been amazing. No, you look, you fully deserve it. That's sort of two fights this year now. I mean, as you know, Brad, we don't get a lot of fights from fighters anymore. It's like once or twice. Here. This is your second fight this year. Potentially going to be out again before the end of the year. Is there talks about that maybe? I'll, I'll definitely fight again this year. Wow. Uh, and yeah, it's going to be a big fight. Like I said, with the British, no easy fights. Maybe the trilogy with Heaney, but there's obviously other options. There's massive names. Um, and yeah, I'm just happy to showcase my skills on a big, big platform and not doing it on small hall anymore, which, which is doing it on stealth mode, basically. So yeah, happy to be here. The, the middleweight sort of around the world is interesting, isn't it? Because obviously the Alan Canali uh, was supposed to fight. He couldn't make weight. He, he missed that opportunity. So when you look at that route to a big, big fight in the middleweight division, it's kind of open. I mean, if you win a couple more, you're there potentially. I mean, they're talking about Hamza Shiraz fighting for world title. If he comes through his fight. So you must look at it and think, you know, yes, I might be getting on a bit in age, but there's an opportunity to jump very quickly in the middleweight division. Yeah, that's it. I think from a British title, because the belt's so highly regarded, from a British title, world title shot afterwards, isn't that the question? You can look at Denzel Bentley. Mm. He fought Jack for the world title whilst having the British. Um, and them sort of doors open for you. So a world title isn't out of the question, something I'd happily take. Mm. Has Frank said anything? Are you, is, does, do you, is Frank looking after you? Is it Frank that looks after you? Yeah, I don't speak to him personally, but... Um, yeah. I'll should should I get him on the phone? I know him. Should I give him a call, ask him what's going on? <laughs> give him a call. Get him to put a show on in Cornwall. They're dying for him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Frank's done Saudi, everything else. He ain't done the show in Cornwall. Yeah. But what is the dream, though, Brad, just before we let you go? I mean, a lot of fighters, especially in sort of the 90s and early noughties, everyone wanted to go to America. That's the dream, right? It was like seeing your name lit up in the Las Vegas trip or Madison Square Garden. If you have the option in terms of what Brad Pauls wants next, what is it? Um... A world title shot in Vegas or a world title shot in Saudi would, would be quite nice. Um, but I'm open to anything. I'm just enjoying the ride. And to be honest, this was the dream. What, to come this, on drive? Yeah. Then, <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's beautiful. It is. It's the best belt. I've always <laughs> said it's the best belt in boxing. Uh, Brad Pauls, congratulations. Well done. Uh, thoroughly deserved. Again, I thought you won it first time around, but obviously put a rubber stamp on it uh, this time. And hopefully... It is a big fight next, and hopefully I'm ringside talking to talking about your fight and interview in the ring. Well done, mate. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.